Hello everyone. Today we have Anil Kumar with us. So Anil Kumar is doing his masters in chemical engineering from University of Alberta. So uh, we will learn a lot about his uh, journey and the kind of curriculum and the st- course structure from the University of Alberta. Hello Anil Kumar. Hello. Hello. Hi. Thank you for having me. Great. Anil Kumar, can you please uh, uh, introduce yourself a little uh, about your background? Yeah, sure. Um, I did my undergraduate in uh, chemical engineering at uh, Vellore Institute of Technology in uh, India, and I worked in marketing for about a year, and then I did my master's here. Uh, I came as a master of engineering course-based uh, student, and I transferred to the thesis one, and uh, I'll be uh, graduating next month, uh, this year. Yeah. Right. So, um, what are the points that helped you to get the admission into this uh, particular course in the Al- University of Alberta, the kind of work experience, uh, how do they add up? So uh, I can give a two-pronged answer for that because if you're doing looking for a master's in uh, engineering or in chemical engineering itself, there's uh, two options in Canada and also at the University of Alberta. One is the thesis-based one, which is more research-oriented, and one is a course-based one, which you do courses on a capstone project and uh, you graduate. So the uh, I j- came in as a course-based student, and that is much easier. Mm-hmm. So um, the work experience, of course, helps you uh, get into the uh, course, but that's not a mandate or it's not mandatory. Uh, the first thing is uh, your basic requirements. You need a bachelor's degree. And second thing is you need your IELTS, English proficiency, IELTS, TOEFL, or as per the university. So I did IELTS for that. And uh, I've cited my internships as the work experience for applying uh, to this course. And so that's the basic requirement. And then in your uh, uh, statement of purpose, you do say your contributions, your past experience, how you can contribute to the culture and also the uh, academic uh, and research side to the university. And uh, you sort of present it that way in a conducive form and then you apply. So the course based is simple and you put the application in, it's reviewed and you get your uh, answer. The uh, thesis-based one, the research-based one, is a bit more uh, complex. So for the research-based one, you'll be working under a principal investigator as his graduate student, be it master's or a PhD. Mm -hmm. So for that, again, you apply uh, to uh, the college. And again, they will vet your application. And then they will allow you to contact the uh, the professors in the department directly. So Mm -hmm. then you start emailing the supervisors. And once a supervisor finds that you have the necessary experience background or let's say the skills to work with his research then they will uh, take you into his uh, his or her uh, research group after an interview or some formal back and forth communication and it's depending on the funding or grants he has for his research so that process is a bit more complicated and uh, uh, that is a bit more time consuming i would say because uh, if you apply this year and you go past the first round the second round can take up to a year or so uh, depending on when the professor gets his uh, funding. So that's the basic idea of how to uh, get into a course at this, uh, for a chemical engineering course in the department here. Right. So the duration mm-hmm. of course-based uh, chemical engineering and thesis-based uh, chemical engineering, are they same or do they differ? Um, so uh, it's a bit different. So the technically speaking, the thesis-based does not have a limit. Mm. Uh there are people in my research group who finished it in one and a half years. There are people who finished it in two years. There are people who finished it in three years as well mm-hmm. because the thesis base is research oriented. All right. So your supervisor determines if you have enough. Uh, so your supervisor might give you some conditions. You have to give him one scientific manuscript or work on two, three projects or something like that. So he determines when you do. But the average time is, uh, I would say, uh, two to three years right. for the uh, thesis base. And there is no fixed end to it. It's all depending on the work you do and your supervisor, your research work. The uh, course-based course is uh, straightforward. So officially, it's 1.5 years. Mm-hmm. But uh, 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 in Indian students, especially immigrant students like us, international students, they extend it to two years. So how it works is you have to do three courses a minimum every semester, mm-hmm. uh, except for your last, to maintain a full, uh, 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 full-time student status. Mm-hmm. So uh, if you go by that, you finish in 1.5 years. Mm-hmm. So essentially, if you start in September, you finish in uh, December. You start in January, you finish in the April of uh, next year. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's how it works. So what students do is they take an extra course in the final semester, do a capstone to push it to the two-year mark or 18-month mark. Mm-hmm. That's most for uh, those who are looking to get uh, uh, you know a longer work permit and uh, things like that. So right. officially, it's a 1.5-year course, but 
people uh, take uh, two years or an extra semester to uh, finish it. Right. Uh, so, for students with what objective do they choose the course base? And uh, students who choose the thesis, what would be their objective uh, from the uh, master's course? Like, is it? I understand this is more of the research side, and the other one is more of a um, get the degree, go to the full time job kind of uh, uh, um, defined structure based um, curriculum. So I just would like to know what kind of uh, objective difference that you see among the students between these two groups. Um, so the main thing is uh, the course base is more for people who want to go to the industry. That is the basic definition. So if you don't plan on doing a PhD or you know, publishing papers is not a priority for you, then uh, um, I would say go to the uh, course-based one. That is the, uh, uh, that's the best, I would say, easiest or uh, route of uh, least resistance. So the, that you can come, you can graduate, you can uh, get a job and that'll be the end of it. But if you want to do a PhD or pursue, um, say, higher studies, or do you want to publish papers or things like that, then the thesis route is better for you. And uh, also, there is an issue. Some um, uh, professors, they don't accept students who did MEng and directly to a PhD, like master's in engineering in a course base. They might ask you to start off with a thesis base again, and then after one year, do a candidacy exam and convert to PhD. So mm. you lose about one year in the PhD process if you uh, go from MEng to a P like a course base to a PhD. So the mm. thesis base is sort of how did, I, I can call it a, um, like the middle ground or like a transitionary co uh, curriculum from uh, uh, from an undergraduate degree to a PhD, while the course base is just uh, you're adding to your knowledge base, that's it. Right, so right. more suited for industry. Yeah. Right, right, great. So um, Anilkumar, like when, we, when you are um, looking, when you are researching for uh, universities and pursuing the masters for chemical engineering, uh, what were the points that distinguished you to choose uh, University of Alberta? Uh, there were two things actually, and uh, I think one would be valid for students coming from India. So the cost of living is a major thing and also the ranking of the university. So uh, if you go by rankings, University of Alberta is in the top five. It, uh, for chemical engineering, it battles between the second and third position every year. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other thing is it's in the city of Edmonton, which I feel is more uh, student friendly mm -hmm. compared to places like uh, Vancouver or uh, Toronto or uh, uh, you know, city, big cities like that. So that was, for me, that was the first priority, cost of living. And second thing, of course, the ranking. It's in the uh, top five. And it, for chemical engineering, especially, this is a well-known university with a very high research output. Right. So these were the, uh, uh, I would say, two or three primary things that attracted me here. And uh, also, um, uh, it's a very good place to be. It's uh, it's not as crowded as the uh, bigger cities. And uh, it's quite nice. The nature is nice. The you see all four seasons here. So, uh, yeah, those are the uh, subsidiary reasons why I'm here. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So, uh, when you you, uh, you said about the IELTS that needs to be given. So, is there anything uh, for the specific course? So, was there uh, generally students uh, in this particular range were selected more? Like, is it like in the higher range or any specific uh, range? Uh, so, um, in the master's level, I don't think it matters much. They're just looking for English proficiency to uh, check mark. Um, mm -hmm. A requirement that's all so of course the higher your bandwidth like if there's a comp competing between two students for the same place you'll have the edge so i would always encourage having a higher width but if you have above 6.5 then that meets the uh, basic criteria for if you're above the 6.5 band it meets the basic criteria to uh, uh, be eligible to right. be a student here. so yeah. what matters the most is the sop that you write where you distinguish mm -hmm. yourself from the rest of the crowd yeah, yeah, and in the SOP, uh, one more thing is uh, this is um, of course you uh, say your background and also how you can contribute to the culture of the university and everything. Mm. It's the distinguishing part. So uh, yeah, I would say put more effort into the SOP. Of course, like the uh, your academic record matters as well, and especially when you come into the West, they look at things more than just your uh, uh, CGPA or GPA. You need to show like uh, you know the clubs you were involved in in uh, high school or in college, the extracurriculars that you were involved in, you can group from sports or activities, things like that. So all those things go into your SOP as well. Right. And uh, you create a whole profile that way. And uh, uh, of course, your marks, you uh, hire, this is a, an academic and a research institution. So they do look at your uh, academic performance. So a higher uh, GPA and then the IELTS. These three are the basics. And 
although uh, the GRE exam is not a requirement here, mm -hmm. I would encourage people to do it because it adds value to your record. It's not a requirement, but it of, of course gives you an edge over the other students mm -hmm. if you have a higher uh, score over there. Mm -hmm. uh, how was the uh, one after you got the admit? How was the visa process? Um, so, um, if uh, uh, for me it was a bit easier, I would say my uh, I did it from uh, I, my parents were in uh, Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates at the time, so I applied from uh, there. And for me, everything was done in uh, three weeks, and all the formalities were done in a month's time. Okay. However, in India, you have to plan a little ahead because one of my friends he applied from uh, I think Delhi, and uh, his timeline was around. Uh, Three to four months to get the process a visa processed right, so right. i think uh, there is uh, a portal I, where you can check the time processing time for the different mm -hmm. applications it's always better yeah. to plan ahead by looking the timeline and plan ahead yeah, and apply, right? yeah, yeah yeah of course yeah yeah that's most important especially for students from india where the volume is very high right so uh, yeah you do need to keep that timeline in mind yeah, yeah. but i would say if you're applying for a if you're a final year student in your undergrad I would say in that's the start of your fourth year. Start applying for universities, not just University of Alberta. Anywhere that you're applying, and not to, only to Canada. Any international applications they're doing, start one year prior, mm -hmm. so you have that uh, leeway period. Because once you get your offer letter, you can start the visa process uh, instantly. So yeah, yeah. So um, since you mentioned about the um, uh, uh, freshers applying for the master's program, I just would like to know: is the internship part of the program, uh, part of the structure of the program? Uh, so there is no co-op or internship officially that is held by the department. Okay. At least I, I'm talking about chemical engineering department. I'm right. not sure about the others. Right. So for chemical and materials engineering department, there is no nothing that's officially done. Okay. So uh, if you are in a thesis based, I don't think you'll be able to do an internship or a co-op because you'll be working for the supervisor even in the summer and spring semesters when usually universities break. Mm. But if you're a, a course based student, then the summer and spring you're you can work forty hours or uh, uh, you can work full time essentially during those four months, um, but you'll have to source the internship or the co-ops or whatever you plan to do by yourself. Right. The university will just provide administrative support, but they will not. Uh, um, how do I say? Um, there, the, it's not uh, integrated into the course. Right. The co-op or internship. Yeah, yeah. Since uh, hmm. you mentioned on the thesis um, uh, course uh, where the more in, uh, students involved more into the research side. Um, are they also paid for the research work or do the professor um, funding comes yeah. in? Yeah, there is a stipend associated right. and uh, um, as a rule of thumb, I would say it covers your tuition fee, mm -hmm. but uh, the living expenses, um, it depends on. So every professor has their own funding and they sort of determine what their student gets. So it's up to the uh, professors, but most supervisors, when if they take you in as a uh, thesis-based student, they will offer you a stipend which at least covers the uh, tuition fee. Right. How much does yeah. the course uh, cost for the... Okay. Uh, so my information would be a bit dated. It will be two years old because that's when I uh, uh, applied. So when I came for a uh, Master's of Engineering, a one-year course was... Uh, uh, so, I mean, a two that 1.5, the whole course, uh, there's something called a guaranteed fees and mm -hmm. for the whole course, it was... Uh, uh, 40,000 uh, Canadian uh, uh, dollars. And uh, for a thesis base, it's a bit less. It's around uh, 12 plus, I think, a couple of thousand of administrative charges, around 14,000 a year. Mm -hmm. so, so for when I came for a course base, it was 40,000 40, for the whole course. So if you want to spread it into two years, I would say around 20,000 per year. Right. So And uh, for, a, uh, for a thesis base, it's around uh, 14,000 four, 14, a year. It's a right. bit less. Right, right. Yeah, and, and also I should mention the course load as well. So for a course based, you do eight courses and one capstone, mm -hmm. while in the thesis based, you just do four courses and you do your research. So mm -hmm. that's a different. Yeah. Right, right. Was mm -hmm. it necessary that you had to pay your semester fees upfront before applying for the visa? Was it necessary in your case? Uh, so in my case, uh, uh, you just had to show proof of. Uh, Right. Uh, funds. That's it. I didn't have to pay beforehand. But I believe uh, last year the university had this policy for the university to confirm the uh, uh, acceptance. You need to pay one year of your tuition fee upfront. So for the forty, you need you need to pay twenty thousand Canadians upfront. And I believe there are some uh, changes to that that's happening right now. So like I said, in terms of tuition fees, my information is a bit dated. It's uh, it's two or three years old. Right. So. Right.
So in terms of the research, um, what sort of uh, uh, different fields that the research mostly gets into? Uh, so it's a wide, uh, it's a wide spectrum. So from in my department, chemicals and materials engineering, we go from uh, a practical experiment based from uh, oil sands, bitumen, uh, energy, any fields uh -huh. uh, to like process optimizations and you know simulation work and uh, things like that. So it covers a very broad spectrum and it's mostly interdisciplinary. So and it depends on the supervisor. So if students are planning for the thesis-based one, I would recommend that they. If have a supervisor in mind, go to their portfolio, their website. Mm. It will show the research they are interested in, and it also show their research team. Right. If they want to talk with someone in their research team, they can email them and get in touch with them to get a feel for what the research looks like and uh, things like that. So, right. Yeah. Right. So uh, after joining University of Alberta, was there uh, something that you felt uh, uh, that University of Alberta in this specific course they are doing different? Uh, from other universities, was there anything advantage like uh, from the pro pro uh, pro side? We found something interesting. Uh, I would say its location is one critical thing. So it's in Alberta, which is the uh, oil and gas, uh, or like the energy hub of uh, at least the fossil fuel energy hub of Canada. Right. So because of that, a lot of industrial representatives from those niches and fields. Uh, frequent the university like for during the seminars or guest lectures as well as conferences and things like that so that networking opportunity would be the i would say the big plus of uh, this university you know city of alberta right and the focus on energy if you want to do energy related research i would say or you want to go into the energy field in the industrial side as well mm -hmm. i would again recommend uh, you go for that right so uh, just uh, just as you mentioned, since the big players are there in uh, Alberta, do people find jobs in Alberta itself uh, after finishing the course? Uh, yeah, it is uh, it is easier, I would say. But then um, uh, again, right now we are like at the brink of a recession. So for this year, and I I would say probably like the first half of the next year, it would be a bit slower. But generally, in those sectors, the recruitment is higher in Alberta. Right. Yeah. Yeah, great. Uh, uh, can you uh, speak about the university life in the, universe, uh, in the Alberta University? Yeah, so right now it's like uh, we are at the, uh, I say we were at the brink of spring, I would say. So right. it's uh, yeah. quite beautiful and nice. Everything's getting lively, sunlight, and it's bliss. It's helpful. A lot of things are happening. And this uh, city itself, it's called the city of festivals. So in the okay. summer, spring, and I would say early fall, there's, it's very vibrant. A lot of things are happening. But I will uh, give like a disclaimer with the winters here. They are a bit extreme. It's one of the uh, coldest uh, places in Canada. Right. So temperatures go down as much as minus 40 uh, right. sometimes. So uh, you got to be prepared. The winters are a bit dull. It's hard. It's harsh right. as well. And especially for people like us who come from like a tropical area. Right. So that, I would say that is the major drawback of this region, the right. winters. But uh, the summer, spring is lively. The student life. Uh, there's a lot of buzz going on and uh, it's, it was very positive. I have nothing uh, negative to say about uh, right. that here. And also, uh, this university is uh, very close to downtown as well as uh, uh, to the, uh, I would say, the, the entertainment region here oh. where they have all these uh, restaurants, clubs, clubs, nightlife, where, you know, all the bustling shopping districts and everything. So the location is also uh, quite good for the university. Situated. It's not remote. Right. So, yeah. It's a big, uh, it's a big plus in that sense, like a social sense to come right. to. You know, yeah, yeah. I know mm -hmm. that you mentioned about the cost of living being not as high as big cities like Vancouver or Toronto. But mm -hmm. what can a student, an immigrant student, can expect his expense to be from the cost of living side? Okay, so recently everything has increased. So currently, I would say for rent, I will, uh, you might have to designate around. Uh, of course, it depends if you're sharing with people or you know if you're. Uh, expectations are low then you can find something to that end so for rent i would say allocate around 500 to 700 if you don't mind sharing but if you want to live alone like in a studio or something it'll be thousand plus uh, easily around the thousand thousand two hundred mark so i would say for that and for groceries i would say uh, again it's depending on you but a good average would be 200 to 400 so if you go at the extremes i would say you might need at least thousand to thousand two hundred a month to like cover all your expenses. But of course you can, you know, budget and uh, so bring it down uh, further. But I would say that's a very good average, reasonable average to expect around 1,200 uh, monthly expenses. Right. Yeah. So uh, do students um, uh, also do part-time jobs uh, mm -hmm. in the course? And, yeah. And, so, right, right. 
Continue, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. And do they find uh, enough jobs within the campus or on campus or is it only off campus? So uh, on campus jobs, uh, there are availability, but uh, you know, naturally there's a lot of competition there. Mm-hmm. So it might be a bit harder to find uh, campus jobs or it, it is available, but it'll be a, a bit hard. Uh, off campus jobs are available, especially in uh, summer, spring, and uh, uh, I would say even fall. But when once winter hits, uh, of course, like even they don't need as many employees as business dips. So during the winter, it will be hard to find uh, part time jobs. But during summer and spring, uh, especially with all the festivals coming in, they always need bodies to do work. So mm-hmm. at that time, there's uh, there's uh, it's uh, I won't say it's easy, but there is availability. Right. But during the winters, you got to be prepared to you know be laid off or. Uh, get your uh, working hours uh, shortened or something right yeah. right i know that for thesis you told that the mostly the um, uh, stipend will cover the fees but uh, from the course based side um, 40000 dollars being a, a good amount uh, usually students how do they manage uh, such a fees um so uh, most of them work part time during the uh, so for course based you get summer and spring off so i would say I think uh, from May to August, May, June, July, August, yeah, these four months are off. Mm-hmm. So apart from these four months in the big semesters, they work part-time. Mm-hmm. And in these four months, they work full-time. Oh, right. And uh, some people with some uh, engineering experience, they get internships in places like Fort McMurray, which is like an industrial zone here. Mm-hmm. And that uh, they pay uh, really well for the internship. So uh, you co- I won't say you'll be able to cover your tuition expenses, mm-hmm. but you might be able to lessen the impact uh, quite uh, drastically that way. Right, right. Great, great. Um, is there anything specific you would like to um, uh, say to the viewers, um, Uh Nothing specific per se, but I would say if you sh- any university that you're choosing, uh, do your research about the right. area, like the city, the situations and other aspects like we discussed or the cost of living and things like that. Because uh, the university... So I should have mentioned that at the start. The reason I use, chose University of Alberta is like, it's at the sweet spot between, uh, you know, expenses as well as ranking for the university. Mm-hmm. So you need to optimize your parameters that way. So you might get into the uh, University of British Columbia, University of Toronto, which is a much more highly ranked university. And if that's your priority, of course, go for that. But if you want to optimize all the other little things, such as living cost and uh, things like that, do your research on the city, uh, its lifestyle and uh, things like that, not just the university. So that's one thing. That's, I would say, a mistake uh, I would have made uh, if I had gotten into the UBC, uh, UB, University of British Columbia, but luckily I got rejected. So <laughs> I ended up in a, a good spot. Right, yeah. right. So I know that you did your bachelor's in chemical engineering and then you're pursuing a master's in the same field. Uh, but generally in the cohort, uh, um, in the course based, or are all the students of the same similar background or are there diversity? Mm-hmm. Uh, no, not at all. So uh, I... So I should clarify, although my degree is in chemical engineering, my research specialization was in uh, uh, batteries or like electrochemistry. So okay. it's an materials engineering. It's like an interdisciplinary uh, the concept. So if you go into research, the degree doesn't matter because the, some of my peers, so my research group was a combination of electrical and mechanical engineers in terms of their degree, but their undergrad backgrounds were from uh, electrical engineering, petroleum engineering. Mm. Um, some chemical engineers were there as well. So it's a mix and match. So it depends on what you want. So if it's a course-based one, I would say your choices are limited. Mm-hmm. Um, you might end up pursuing uh, a similar field of engineering study as your uh, undergrad. Uh, although, of course, they are not as uh, strict, I would say. But if you're in a, a, a thesis-based one, so this was for course-based. So if you're in a course-based, you did your undergrad and uh, say chemical, the options here are either chemical materials or maybe like environmental engineering or petroleum engineering, and these are in the civil department. Uh, however, um, if you are here for a thesis-based course, uh, it depends on what your professor's research is or something like that. So in, for a thesis-based, I would say you're choosing your professor, not the degree. Mm-hmm. Right. That's another difference because uh, mm-hmm. there are, uh, uh, I have a friend who is a chemical engineer and he's in the uh, electrical department. Because there's a part of chemical engineering called uh, process systems, alarm systems, and things like that, and there's not substantial research in the chemical zone. So he's working in the electrical department for that. So that's one distinction I would say. So course based, you might end up in a similar one as your undergrad. Thesis based, it depends on your uh, uh, professor, whichever department he's in, like your supervisor, like your field of interest, and uh, you choose a supervisor that, and whichever department he is in, that will be your uh, degree. 
right so that's one distinction yeah right 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 so i understand that in thesis since you do a lot of research uh, the finding the um, uh, job after completing the course um, maybe that you are you the research will be mu- very much valued in the uh, hiring process probably uh unfortunately no because as i mentioned uh, the and a thesis based or like a master so the course base is called master of engineering okay. and the thesis base is called master of science so the master of um uh, so usually industries themselves they don't dis- differentiate that much right. between uh, <clears throat> a master of engineering and master of science and i would go as far as to say they are not even aware of the differences at, at okay. times so uh there's not a big gap i would say but say like your research is in an industry where the industry works so for example you work in like uh, on coal and you're going to work applying for a coal company or like a coal mining company of course you'll have the uh, edge over the others uh, but if you're looking for a research position say a research assistant or research associate or something then of course you have the edge but i will not definitely say that uh, you have a much get a priority if you do a, a master of science right right So if your research like coincides with the industry mm. then you might have the extra edge but if not then you are in the same boat as the uh, master of engineer and master of science right right so those who come to graduate uh, how do they break the ice in getting their first job uh again this is a so i'm in the process myself right. and uh, <clears throat> one big word is uh, networking because right. here it's it's not about what you know it's about who you know Right. So I would say attend these uh, networking events and things like that. Just strike up a conversation, and that's one thing the university has. So in the career uh, development, uh, they have a uh, like an organization within the university to help students with that. They have like uh, uh, networking sessions where you know they organize a session, bring recruiters and uh, representatives of companies here. You have an interaction with them. They have a mentorship program where you uh, where you're mentored by. You give a set of requirements. and uh, they find a mentor who meets the requirements and uh, sort of uh, uh, assigns them to you give me a second throat yeah. is drying up yeah yeah without yeah. perfect yeah 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 so as i was saying like they have these mentorship programs where um, uh, they uh, like pair you with a mentor who has like a background that or a field that you're looking to go into mm-hmm. and you have like discussions with them you meet a couple of times a month mm-hmm. and they have like job shadowing program where you shadow a person like go through their day to day and things like that so all of these opportunities you're striking up a conversation with uh, people working in a particular field mm-hmm. and that conversation be it informal formal technical non technical whatever it is for, serves as a means of introduction so as you near your graduation you sort of uh, connect with them saying this is what i'm looking for this is the a sort of a role or position i want to work with these are my expectations these is my uh, uh experience this is my history these are my skills and these are the skills i can develop and you sort of uh how do you say uh build up that interaction and uh, you know they connect if they don't have a position in their uh organization they'll connect you to someone who is looking for it or uh, direct you in a uh, for a viable solution that fits all these parameters so yeah networking that's the key thing here to land a job yeah yeah In terms of the weather, is there any advice that you would like to give for students coming from tropical country from the terms of preparation? They need to yeah, do? yeah, definitely. So, um, so first thing, yeah, be prepared for the winter. It's not anything you have experienced before, and it's very harsh. I mean, I don't know if it's visible. My hands are all cut up because of the mm-hmm. dry weather. So uh, you'll need to use moisturizer, things like that, and also you need to cover up and you know layer up when you go out. That's that'll take some practice to do. and um yeah one thing i would say is if you're buying so you layer up you wear different cloth uh, layers of clothes on you so the outer layer i would say that is the most important try not to buy the uh, brand new ones cuz they can easily go about 200 mm-hmm. and i i don't think that's worth the investment you can find second hand ones that match your size on facebook marketplace or mm-hmm. kijiji or things like that also buy during off season so they will have um, Uh, so like don't buy the clothes at the uh, you know the height of winter everything will be priced high so there will be a clearance sale going on as the seasons change for the previous year or something like that yeah. so that's when you can get the most bang for your buck so look out for that and also student discounts uh, you shouldn't feel shy or embarrassed to ask any place you go ask if they have a student discount mm-hmm. and usually 10 to 15% most places have so right. in addition to whatever sale they're having right so uh, uh, i would say yeah that's one thing to use uh, about winter clothing 
Um, and yeah, you have to always dress in layers rather than having a very thick high coat mm. because as uh, their clothes temperature resistant increases, so does the cost of it. And uh, yeah, and also like covering up your fingertips, get good quality gloves, good quality boots, shoes, especially ones that are waterproof. So uh, that's important. And I would say uh, you can buy winter clothing from uh, uh, back home India or Asia or something, but I would say the quality here is better. Um, the only shop I would say which has good outer clothing is Decathlon in India. I'm not uh, promoting or marketing it, but the products there are uh, almost as good quality as the ones you have here in like big stores like Columbia or uh, um, uh, uh, like North Face or something like that. So. Yeah, I would recommend, especially for students coming from India, Decathlon is a good place to buy your uh, maybe your gloves and your uh, uh, big outer jacket. But then again, if you don't have space in your luggage or something and you want to get it here, uh, I would again recommend looking for the second hand or the clearance sale rather than buying a brand new one. Right, right. Great, great, uh, Anil Kumar. Thanks a lot for sharing a lot of details. Um, of uh, so, uh, viewers, just like as always uh, say, this is the journey of Anil Kumar. And uh, similarly, uh, as I always say, not two people's journey are similar. As I, Anil Kumar says, uh, do your thorough research in terms of uh, what you want, uh, where do you, uh, in the terms of the price, the kind of place where you want to be there. So, decide your university based on your priorities and um, uh, do your thorough research in terms of the professor that you choose if it is a thesis based course or uh, the kind of job opportunities the place the cost of living uh, various aspects of the place uh, depending on what you want uh, from you uh, from your priorities uh, thanks a lot uh, yeah it's uh, i'm happy to share uh, my journey yeah thank you for the opportunity thank you mm -hmm.